it's that time. Let me work my brightness up because it's probably going to be dark while I film. Hopefully that doesn't fall on the floor today. Today's video is going to be my 2022 literally never know what year it is in these videos my 2022 like beauty favorites so it's it is obviously mostly makeup but i have a fragrance i have two hair products and two skincare products as well i'm gonna go through those things first i'll leave a timestamp for the makeup favorites in case you just want to skip to the makeup and you don't care about anything else but the favorites that i'm going to talk about prior to the makeup they're so good so just 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 watch that's basically it i've um everything that i've managed to put on my face obviously i haven't been able to use everything but everything on my face is a favorite so uh yeah i've got little demo clips as well but a majority of these things you guys already see me use because i love them you've seen me use them throughout the year there are a couple products where some of them, I will say it, like primers for example, my Smashbox, my primerizer, it's still my holy grail favourite so I'm trying not to talk about products that are like my staples. Um, I'll leave my video of my like top three in like every category video, I'll leave that in the description box because that's got like my staple holy grails. Yeah, this is just everything that I've like discovered or just used the most this year. So starting off, I'm gonna start off with a fragrance because something I don't know why I didn't realise but I just obviously I only use like cruelty free stuff but for some reason perfumes never clicked to me for some reason I don't know why my favorite perfume like ever that I've ever tried is the YSL black opium I know why I sell test on animals for some reason my brain didn't click when it came to perfumes so I've still got like my black opium and I've still got I think like Victor and Rolf um, I think I've got a Mugler I don't know if they they test on animals or not but yeah, I'm trying to steer away and go to obviously more well, obviously cruelty free brands. So I'm gonna use those up but not repurchase them. So I was looking for like a dupe or just the closest thing that I can get to black opium. And apparently this is supposed to be a dupe. It's similar, but I don't think it's exactly the same. This is from Zara's own brand. You can't see because obviously it's just clear. But yeah, this is Zara's own brand and this is the Gardenia perfume. This is, I love it. It is similar, there is a there is a scent that is very close to the black opium but i feel like that is more sweet this one's a bit more florally but it's a very like it's still sweet at the same time and it is a very like mature like sweet scent that's kind of what i like i don't like the kiddie sweet perfumes like that but i still like my sweet a little bit of sweet in there alternatives any cruelty free like companies that you guys like know of for like perfumes let me know because I definitely need to go there with perfumes because yeah I, I didn't realize I'm gonna be like as quick as possible because we've got literally like a full face to do quickly want to talk about hair my hair has become a disgrace to put it lightly um, since I moved out from home I've basically gone from Manchester which is right up north not right up north but north I've gone to the opposite end I'm now down south strangely it's warmer but the air and the water here is disgraceful I hate it it doesn't agree with me like I can't stand it I like the heat in the fact that it is slightly warmer but my hair and my skin my skin's already been very dry since my health like condition and everything has developed but my hair since I've moved it is the driest flakiest thing I've ever ever dealt with I've never actually dealt with this before I used to complain about having oily hair because I had to use dry shampoo and things like that I miss my oily hair. I'd rather take greasy oily hair and have to maintain that because maintaining dry, a dry scalp is much more difficult. So I've got two products here. One isn't really to do with the dry scalp but just my hair in general. Um, for the dry scalp this is something I discovered kind of towards the end of the year but it's the best thing. It's from the brand Eucerin and it's their Dermo calming scalp treatment basically so this is what it looks like you can get this from boots that's what i got it from eucerin is a very very good brand um it's mainly i think skincare i think but it's got a lot of like hair treatments the main like recommendations all the companies tested on animals so this is the brand that i had to go to but it's been working really well so i just it's literally just like that i just put it in my hair i like put it down the middle and then i just massage it into my scalp just as soon as i come out of the shower and i also use it about two to three times a week kind of 
every off day. It's, it's definitely helped keeping the moisture in there and it's just been really good. The other thing that has also been really, really helpful that I've used kind of along this is a pre-shampoo treatment. It's a scalp scrub. I've left it in the bathroom, but I'll add a picture of it here. I think the brand's called Umberto Gianni or something like that. It's like a blue scrub. That is so good. That will just get rid of everything and your hair is nice and fresh and clean like it is now because I just wash my hair. The last hair product is something that one of you guys actually recommended for hair growth. I take a lot of medication now, so my hair, it thins my hair out. My hair falls out so much. Fortunate, but it is what it is. I need my medication, so I can't really do anything about that. Castor oil is one thing that has really helped, but one of you guys told me to try this. I don't know how you pronounce the name. Is it Miel? Miel? I I, you know I can't speak, I can't read, I can't do anything. That's the brand anyway. I think this is like a well-known thing, but it's the Rosemary Mint Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. Again, I use this when I just come out of the shower or I also use it in between like my wash as well in the week. I still try to only wash my hair like once a week, every fourth, fifth day. Yeah, this has definitely helped. I've seen a difference of my hair growth for sure. Um, I've used about this much of it. I'm about up to here very good a little bit also goes a long way um but yeah i realized one of you guys did recommend it to me but i also then went on beauty bay and it was in my wish list so you know great minds great minds okay i'm gonna only talk about two products i could go on with my skincare i in part of me did want to do just a dedicated video just for skincare because 2022 but towards the end of the year kind of from september is when I fell in love with my skincare and I really got into it. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about my own skin, kind of what I need and the benefits of different products for your skin. I'm not gonna go through every single category. I'll do an updated skincare routine at some point, but let's just talk about these two. So this is a cleanser. So this is from the brand Notorium and it's their Niacinamide Cleansing Gelée. It's got 3% niacinamide in it. This is like one of the best face washes, cleansers, whatever you want to call it, I've ever used. You can use this for everything. If I, I don't travel that much, but I've traveled a couple times this year. This is like the only thing that I'll take because 2022 has also been the, the year, the day, the year that I've stopped with the makeup wipes. They do nothing for your skin. They're actually really bad for your skin. They damage your skin barrier for starters, but they also just move the makeup around. They don't really remove your makeup. So if you're still someone that uses makeup wipes, cut them out. There's so many other things you can use. Cleansing balms, I'm now a lover of cleansing balms, but I kind of like oils and like these jelly cleansers a bit better, but it's up to you. I'm now a double cleansing fan. You can use this as your first cleanse. So it you massage it and you just put it onto your dry skin, massage it in and then you just, I, well, this is what I do anyway. I then wet my hands and then it kind of, I think it's called emulsify in it. You basically rub it and it goes kind of a little bit soapy. And then that you really see it just taking everything off. Eye makeup, waterproof stuff, this is gonna do it. And then you can also use this as your second cleanse or if you wanna use a different cleanser, that's absolutely fine. We can use it in the morning as well because I just love how my face feels after I've used this. And like I said, I can use it as a first cleanse, a second cleanse and a morning cleanser as well. So it's just everything just in one. It's got very good ingredients, like like I said, niacinamide mainly, and it says that it's formulated with a level of niacinamide that gently dissolves makeup, oil, and other impurities while targeting the look of dark spots. That's what niacinamide is for, um, and uneven texture, and this cleanser leaves the skin feeling softer, smoother, and more balanced. It does all of that. You literally feel so, so smooth and just just clean. Like your skin is literally so soft after one use of it. Honestly, after the first time I used it, I was like, wow, wow. And I've actually discovered my favorite moisturizer, I think, this year. This is from Pacifica, and this is their Vegan Ceramide Barrier Face Lotion. This is what it looks like. First of all, Pacifica, their packaging is so cute. I've also got a cleanser from them as well that I've been using and I really like that. This is literally my favorite moisturizer ever. My Walida Skin Food is still there. I still have that. It's always gonna be in my collection. It smooths your skin so much. It's so, so soft, um, but it's also got ceramides in it, which is good for your skin's barrier, which is what I have been working on for my skin. But I feel like their price points are pretty good and so far so good with Pacifica. I really like what I've tried. I'm obsessed. You can see how much I've used. I'm literally up to here. I've used like the almost the entire bottle, a good three quarters, like 
it, yeah, we're right down to the last quarter of it. I use this nighttime, by the way. This is like my main nighttime moisturizer. That is that done? We can finally get on to makeup. So we're gonna start off with face primer. I'm just gonna kind of go in the order that I do my makeup. When it comes to primers, there hasn't been that many that I've been like, wow, because I've got my favorites, like I mentioned. But these are the two that I've used the most throughout the year. First one being the e.l.f. Cookies and Dreams Putty Face Primer. I don't really like the original putty primers, which is a very unpopular opinion. I find them a bit too drying. I've tried the luminous one as well. It's just got glitter in it. I don't like it and I don't think it blurs your skin anyway. This Cookies and Dreams one, I don't know if this is limited edition, but I hope it's not because this has been the one. First of all, it smells very sweet. I love the scent of it, but this is just like a moisturizer, but it blurs your skin out. I've used it today, like you'll see in the demo. I don't just use it like on my like cheeks, nose, kind of where I want to blur. I use this all over my face because it is literally just like that moisturizing primer, but it's got the blurring benefits to it as well. The other one is the Milani SPF BFF primer. This again, it's just it just feels like a moisturizer. I was using this one more in the summer. It's got a bit of SPF in there as well. This one leaves a nice glow on your skin as well. Um, and yeah, you've seen me use this quite a lot. I know I've used this definitely more in the summer. I'm gonna be quick, quick, quick. Eye primer, very quickly. Rare Beauty eye primer, you knew it was gonna be this. This has just done it. It gives a nice um, white, like clean base basically for your eyes. I have very dark lids, as you know, I've talked about, as you can see, this just does it. It covers all the darkness for me and it genuinely does make my, it makes my eyeshadow look nicer, but it also makes it last as well. Foundations was very easy for me to be honest. I found this was the year that I found my holy grail foundation I'm kind of torn between two of them and then I also have a tinted moisturizer as well because I've been using Tinted moisturizers more than anything. So for me, it's been the Fenty Ease Drop I used the shade number 10 and I haven't actually used this in a while to be fair I just dug it out the bottom of my drawer, but I know I was just using this so much especially for work This is like the perfect like not wear no makeup makeup kind of thing but it does blur your skin a little bit it makes you look like you kind of have a little filter going on it just wears very well throughout the day as well so i love that and then i have these two i was torn between which is my favorite but i'm leaning more towards this one which is the smashbox studio skin 24 hour hydro foundation this is a very old product this is not new in any way shape or form this one is but i fell in love with it and i found this this year um yeah it is just perfect for me it's perfect for every day but even even if i was going out like how that i do if i was going out to the club i was just going out out i would still trust this and i'll still wear this and that's why this is like my perfect i think everyday foundation or just for everything i think it is genuinely my holy grail I love this thing. I've been using it a bit less at the moment. I did mention this in my last video, but I did get this in the summer. So as we can see, my tan has gone. Um, so I'm a little bit lighter at the moment, but I will just mix in a bit of white foundation if I did want to use this. Yeah, I love this. It's my favorite. I might actually just get like a lighter shade just to save the laziness of mixing it, but I don't know. Anyway, I love this. Holy grail. She does it all. Then we have this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. This is very similar to the Smashbox one in the fact that it's glowy, it's long lasting, and it's very hydrating for the skin. The Charlotte Tilbury one is the one that I'm wearing now. I use this, the shade 6 Cool, my perfect color. I feel like the only reason that I prefer the Smashbox one to this is that this one just wears a little bit better. Um, this one will get like noticeably more dewy throughout the day So I feel like if you want something more long-lasting that isn't gonna like change the look So if you've got more oily skin, this one is probably gonna be better than this one This one will get a bit more dewy throughout the day or a lot more dewy My skin can handle that because it's so dry, but just keep that in mind if you're someone that's a bit oily um, But yeah, I do really like it as well. So that's that um, concealer was a bit tricky for me because I don't think I've got a concealer this year where I've been like, oh my god, apart from the pink honey one that I've discovered, but I can't really use that in like a yearly favourites because I've literally discovered that last month. Um, but just thinking about concealers that I've been using the most, I think it's the Il Maquillage. Um, this is the Fuck I'm Flawless concealer. I don't know if this was in, I haven't actually watched my last yearly favourites. Usually I, oh, I just read the description box. Um, usually I check that so I'm not like 
like repeating the same favourites from last year. I didn't do that this year, so I'll do that after this video and we'll see what we've got, but this might have been last year's favourite, but it's just one of my favourite concealers ever. I feel like I don't talk about it that much, but I use this off camera a lot. It's like the perfect concealer for everything. It's very, very thin, but it's got very good coverage and it just wears very well throughout the day. Um, it's a perfect for like every day, but also if you're going out and you need like coverage, this is the one. So powders, I just have this one. Honestly, if I had to just throw out all my other powders and just keep this one, I'm happy with that. It's the best powder I have ever used and I highly doubt I'm gonna find one that's better than this. I say never, but this is it. And this is from the brand Rafai. This is an influencer's brand. Her name is Jess Hunt, I believe. And this is the Skin Finish Water Base Powder. Uh, this is the shade number two. So this is the more pinky toned one. They have a couple different shades, I believe. This is just so unique, specifically because it's a water based powder. I've personally never used one before. And this is amazing. I don't have to bake with this. I literally just use another yearly favorite, which is my little powder puffs. This needs to clean, but yeah, triangle powder puffs. I just get these off Amazon. They are perfect for just fitting under your eyes. With these, I think I just definitely don't need to bake because they're really good at just pushing in the product. This, these two paired, perfect. It does literally feel cold and like wet when you touch it. And it feels, it feels a bit odd like the first time you use it, not gonna lie, cause you're like, I literally think I did a video where I used this as a first impression and I genuinely thought in that video that like my sponge was wet. I was so confused. I didn't realize that it was a water-based powder till after, but it blurs your skin out so nicely. It smooths it. Just like, look at my skin. Look at my skin. I use it under my eyes and then slightly here as well. And it just, it just sets your makeup so, so well and nothing budges with this. I just, it's everything that I want in a powder because it doesn't look like powder either. That's the main thing. You know, with some powders, like they're a bit heavy. As much as I love the Fenty loose powder, that is heavy. You can feel that on your face. This, you can't feel it. It's undetectable. Okay, going on to, we'll just do settings very quickly. Um, nothing interesting, but this is the NYX Bear With Me Prime Set and Refresh Mist. This, I love this. I've used, I mean, I haven't used too much of it because most of the time, not gonna lie, I, for, I just forget. I forget to use setting sprays, but this has been the one that I've definitely used the most this year. It's just nice and fresh. I've used it as a primer a couple times as well, and yeah, I like it. Okay, moving on to bronzer. I've got, um, we're nearly done actually. We're not, I feel like I have not taken too long, thank God. Um, but yeah, I've got a cream and I've got powder as well. For the cream, it has to go to Rare Beauty. This is the Happy Soul bronzer stick. That's the shade that I use. It's just so good. I just love the formula. It's extremely pigmented, but this shade as well for me is perfect. And I just love the formula. It's very long lasting for a cream product as well. Blends really well into your skin, very seamless. And it just, I feel like you can contour as well as bronze with this and it just does everything that you need a bronzer to do. It bronzes, it contours, it's a great formula. Rare Beauty have been it. They've been the brand of the year for sure because um, I've got one other thing from Rare Beauty as well. Um, but the other one has to go to this. This guy is the Juvia's Place um, bronzing duo. This is one that I use more off camera, I think. But yeah, this is the medium shade. I think I used this in one of my last videos. Yeah, I just love this. I mix these two shades both together and obsessed. The formula is so soft and creamy. It doesn't look like you've, I've even used it that much, but there's just no, it, there's, it makes no dent in this for some reason. But yeah, the shade, the formula, and the finish. It's very smooth on the skin as well. But yeah, the packaging also, I could stare at this all day. Like this is artwork to me. Okay, we're nearly there. Let's just do blush quickly. Back to Rare Beauty, it has to be them, it has to be Rare Beauty. But this for me is kind of the shock because I always thought that Bliss was gonna be my favorite. But actually it's this one. And I think this is one of their dewy ones. I'm not, I still don't actually know, but from the look of my skin, I'm thinking this is more of one of the dewy ones. Um, but this is the shade Happy. And it's a bright, bright pink, but it doesn't look like it. And that's why I was surprised with this the most that this is the most used colour for me. I think I've got four, I've got three other ones, I believe, or even four. 
This is the one I use the most. I do like mixing Bliss, which is a lighter pink. I like mixing that in with this as well sometimes, but this has been it for me. They're so pigmented. If you've never used Rare Beauty blushes before, extremely pigmented, so always just go in with a little bit and then just build it if you need to. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever gonna run out of one of these because you need the dot. Uh, from the packaging to the colors to the formulas, I love them. And then in terms of powders, I also want to give this this one a shout out, but I don't know if you can still get it. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Nude Gasm Face Palette. Um, I've been using this a lot. This was like my go-to everyday like palette for I'd say about like a good like four or five months. Like at the start of the year, this was I think start of the year or like halfway through the year. This was just it because it just has everything, well not everything, but it's got like a good variety in here. It's got bronzer, it's got your blush and it's got highlight. Th this did kind of force me to use highlight a little bit. I just would take like my finger and just kind of do that. Just add a little bit extra glow if I wanted. I actually forgot to use this today. I used everything else. Um, this would make a really nice eyeshadow as well. Um, but yeah, I originally wasn't gonna get it because I saw this grayish, very light bronzer and I was like, I'm never gonna use that. I literally take my brush and I just mix these two together and it's just a very, very high quality formula. I love this palette and this blush as well is like my favorite um, like powder blush. I'm obsessed, so. If you can still get this, I think it's worth the money to be honest. <sighs> We're nearly there. Let me do this couple boring bits and then we'll go on to lips. So quickly let's go on with the eyes. Eyeliner, you know it's gonna be the NYX, the Epic Ink liquid liner. This is just the only one that I use, like ever, most of the time, unless I switch up for a video. It's just the best. If you are terrible at eyeliner like me, this basically just does it for you. It's just so, so easy to use. When it came to mascaras, I was a bit like, meh. Like, I've got my Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara that's been my favourite for so many years. I've kind of gone more towards the, like, natural found- uh, not foundations, natural mascaras, I think, this year, because it's been more minimal for me. I'm not wearing tons of eyeshadow or any eyeshadow, really, so I've kind of gone for the more, like, lengthy ones, but still give volume as well, and I didn't want to put this one in it because this is literally so recent. This is from like October or November, but it's the Swede mascara again that I've been talking about a lot recently. I'm wearing it today. This is the one I've got on. I don't think I filmed it, but it just, it's perfect. I love this so much, but one that's quite similar, that's more affordable that I've been using actually throughout the year is the e.l.f. Lash It Loud mascara. This is so good. If you've got tiny eyelashes, I feel like this will really be good for you because of the brush. Similar to the Swede one, honestly, I think this is actually a dupe for this. I don't know how expensive this is, but it won't be more affordable than e.l.f. for sure. This is a very good alternative for that one because it basically does the same. It's got a very, very tiny brush, so if you've got short lashes, like I said, it's gonna be easy for you to use. But what I also really like about this is that it also like curls your lashes up. I know, like I've got friends that have like really, really short lashes and they said that even when they curl them, they don't hold up. This brush or just like the formula with it, it really does just like lift them as well. So yeah, this is a very good mascara and I'd say I've been using this probably the most this year. Okay, let's do eyeshadow and then we'll finish with lips. Um, I don't wear eyeshadow. We know that. My videos this year have probably been the most boring ever because it's just face-based, really. But that's what I'm into with my makeup now. I don't really look for eyeshadow palettes. Um, but these two are the ones that I've used the most. This one is, you can see, like, it's all scratched off. But my Holy Grail eyeshadow palettes still remain top tier, artist couture, they are the ones. But the one that I've been using the most this year is probably this one from Colourpop. This is not a new palette whatsoever of theirs, it's actually quite an old one, but this is their Wild Child palette. I think I did a favorite, it's definitely been in a favorites video of mine before. It's just got really good everyday colors, but also it's got a glitter in here, like a pressed glitter. I've used, used this with like a bit of glue on top and it's really good, but it's also got like a shimmery one. This one is more like a glittery, like a like with your finger if you just wanted a bit of like like a kiss of like glitter over and then it's got like the normal like shimmery shades here like the foiled shades 
and then your mattes as well so i just just the tones for me are just what i love do wish that this was a black instead i really really wish that was a black but other than that it's a perfect palette for me and I've just been using it so much. And the other one has to be this one that I'm wearing today and that I demoed for you. This is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette and this is the light version. They have another shade, I believe, a deeper one. Like the blush as well, but the eyeshadows are just, they are it. They're very, very good quality. I do really like this palette. I think it's worth it if you're definitely gonna use everything in here. And for me, it's like this shimmery shade. I don't have anything else that's like this. The formula is very unique. There is a bit of fallout, so I always do my eyes first when I use this palette. Um, but yeah, it just, look at that. This is one of those palettes where it's a very, it's very easy to do a full glam look with. Like this, it probably looks like I took my time and it took forever to do this eye makeup. No, it didn't. It literally took like two minutes because I used literally three shades. It's just it. Oh my God, I'm literally, I'm tired myself out and I'm literally just talking. <sighs> Let's just finish with lips now. So this year, I feel like it's been the year for like lip oils. I think everyone has all brands have come out with a lip oil of some sort these are the two that have really done it for me and these are the two these are the two most lip, lip products period i think that i've been using because i don't really use lipstick that much anymore if anything i'll do a bit of lip liner but these two are the ones and they're actually very similar this one is from nyx it's the um this is juice gloss they are apparently electrolyte infused I don't know what that means, but this is one is in the shade Pomegranate Clout. I hate that name, it makes me cringe, but the color, I love this so much. So it is actually a gloss, but it's basically a lip, like for me it's a lip oil, it's not sticky whatsoever. Um, I'm actually gonna use this one more. I haven't used this one that much because this kind of took over. Um, Ooh, I forgot how much how good this smelled. This is the one that I forgot about because I usually kept this in my drawer at work So I didn't use it at home that much, but yeah, this is just very very um, Just very soft on the lips very hydrating um, Like I said, that's why I class it as lip oil and it gives like that little hint of red as well on your lips the one that I've really been using the most is from the beauty crop and this is their um, hydrating lip oil. This one is in the shade Bay. B-A-I-E. Look how much of this, I've nearly run out of this. You can clearly see this has been well loved. This one I use more just because it smells so good. Like it smells, it kind of smells like the Too Faced lip injections if anyone knows what they smell like. It's just so sweet and sugary. It's like artificial sweets basically. I'm actually just gonna put a little bit on the top. I love this so much, this is gonna have to yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the next one a bit after this. But yeah, same thing as this, very, very hydrating and it just gives that nice um, bit of like color to your lips so you don't have to wear like a lip liner or anything. It's perfect for work because if you're drinking coffee or anything like that, it's not gonna like transfer because it's just a lip oil, but it's not pigmented enough to transfer like a lipstick would, if that makes sense. So yeah, these two have been like the most used ones ever. Last kind of last category, lip liner and lipstick. It's mainly been lip oils for me, but when I have used like lipsticks or a lip liner, Refi again, Refi have done it. This is like the best creation ever. This is what I really love about this brand. I feel like they don't just pump out a bunch of products that like we already have. They come out with like really creative thing, like the water-based powder, amazing, I love that. Also, their lip liners are so unique. Um, so this one is in the shade Rosewood. This is one I've used today. This is one I've used the most. And again, this is perfect for work because it's not gonna transfer. It's perfect for just every day or just, uh, just a long lasting lip liner in general. Um, I've got another color as well, but I use this one more. And then if you screw this bit here under the way you screw for the lip liner, just this bit, you have the sealant. So it's basically just like a clear little gel I guess you just put this over the lip liner or even if you've got lipstick you can put this over and then I like to pat it in because if you just use the applicator I've noticed it does leave a bit of like a white mark so if you just tap it in with your finger so it's blended properly let it dry 
that seals it. That seals your lips, you're done. You don't need to touch up, you don't need to reapply, and it doesn't transfer throughout the day. I have tested this many times and it works. It's so good. If I've worn lipsticks, it's been the Milani ones again. I feel like these may have been in last year's, but they're just my favorite lipsticks, I think. Um, what are my other favorite lipsticks? I do really like the Artist Couture ones. These ones are more affordable and easily accessible. Um, these are the two shades that I have and they're just my favorite. The first one that I use the most that you guys will know is Tease. This is that brownie nude. This is the perfect everyday brownie warm nude for medium skin. I just, I love this. I really, really love this one. I'll show you. Oh, I love this. Look at that. Perfect. I love that one. So that's the one I use most and then the one I'm using today is Pleasure Which is more of a pinky one. This shade reminds me of my mom. She's more of like a pinky gal These are the two that I'll just go between really if I'm wearing lipstick I'll be like right if I want a brown it's tease if I need a pink it's pleasure. So yeah, the formula is so soft on these. They last really well. They do transfer, they're not like matte, I don't think, but they wear really well and they're comfortable to wear on the lips. Oh my God, we're done. I think we're done. If I've missed anything, I don't care. We're done here. So that is it. That is everything for like my top everything of 2022. So the best beauty of 2022 for me, please let me know what your favorites are for this year and any of the recommendations or anything else just just let me know i'm assuming this is going to be my last video for the year so if it is thank you if you've been watching my videos for the, the whole year thank you for still watching my videos and if you've joined me this year hi and thank you looking forward to next year it feels weird saying that still. In my mind, it's still September. But yeah, thank you for joining me and Happy New Year to everyone as well. So be safe, be sensible. I am probably going to stay inside and play Pokemon. No, I'll have to do something for New Year's. Even though I want to stay inside and play Pokemon. But yeah, whatever you do, enjoy yourself, have fun. And I will see you in the new year. And... I feel like I should make like my first video of the year something like amazing, but we'll see. I don't know. I'll, I'll have a little think. But as always as well, um, let me know any, any videos that you guys want me to do. And thank you again for watching and just spending time with me. And I'll see you in my next video and I'll see you next year. Mm -hmm.